All right, Wednesday, uh, January 27th, 8.03 a.m. I'll call the Board of Selectmen meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. This is a workshop meeting with the Board of Selectmen in advance of uh, and first of a series of negotiation meetings with SLV uh, regarding a 40B project in Manchester. So um, we have a, a very limited number of topics that we're gonna talk about today. Um, specifically around uh, fiscal impacts of the project. Um, and I want to reiterate uh, one thing before we get into this for the public. So the Board of Selectmen um, uh, is in a position where we need to uh, treat this project as if it's going forward in order to negotiate uh, the best possible outcome <clears throat> for the town. Um, it's possible the project would uh, fail ultimately when it gets to the zoning board, either for environmental reasons or other safety reasons. But for this part of the negotiation phase, the board of selectmen has to treat this process as if the development is going forward and therefore is negotiating the best possible terms under which it would go forward. Um, <clears throat> that's what this whole uh, first step of this process is about. Uh, we are in receipt of a petition that came in to us last night from the, um, that was uh, instigated, I understand, by the Citizens Initiative uh, group uh, asking the board to delay uh, negotiations for a number of reasons. Um, <clears throat> Some of these reasons uh, or some of the uh, uh, conditions for uh, that the um, citizens on the petition have signed uh, are asking for are conditions that really can't be met until or won't be met until the um, uh, developer is actually before the zoning board. Specifically, the details around the wastewater treatment plant simply won't be um, defined until they go before the zoning board and fairly late into that process. That, that doesn't seem reasonable, um, but as the town attorney has said uh, on a regular basis, this is not a normative process. It is a process which has been set up by the state, which benefits the developer. Um, <clears throat> And there are a number of things that you would think you would have the information for in advance before you, um, you know, uh, approve or disapprove of a project. Um, but we don't have that information right now. So uh, the, the Board of Selectmen is not uh, right now an approving authority. We don't approve or disapprove the project. We're not in a position where you have no standing to actually reject the, the project. We can only decide whether or not <clears throat> we um, are willing to sign a letter of endorsement with a set of conditions for the project. Um, approval of disapproval of the project will be done by the zoning board and uh, in part by CONCOM and other state agencies. So that's the position that we're in. Um, now, um, <clears throat> the decisions that we're making today surround the discussion around fiscal impact. Um, we have a set of initial conditions that we're gonna be discussing with the developer tonight. I will um, try to get those posted to the, the website in advance of that meeting. Um, the conditions are broken into um, three or four different areas, um, fiscal impacts, environmental impacts, traffic impacts, and other impacts. And we decided at our last meeting that we were going to be focusing on the fiscal impacts um, <clears throat> tonight initially, because there's a lot of uh, ground to cover. <clears throat> and we want to see if we have any um, common ground with the developers, to see if it's uh, possible for us to continue. Um, so for the benefit of the uh, public, I'll read off the fiscal impacts right now, and then I'm going to get into the two 
points of discussion that the board wanted to have this morning before we go into tonight's meeting. So first is to reduce the number of apartments and reduce the height to three main floors. We, this is the one that we're gonna be putting a little bit more um, uh, specific numbers around this morning. Two, maintain the same proportions of three to two to one to one plus bedroom units as in the original proposal. This one's important to us because um, uh, it matter. It, uh, it, it is one of the things that really affects the impact and it's going back to the town. Three, preclude, preclude any future additions or expansions. Four, <clears throat> provide a local preference for 70% of the affordable units. Five, reduce to 60% of AMI for half of the affordable units. Six, pay for water main extension along School Street across 128 overpass to the site. Seven, pay for individual unit water meters. Eight, pay for all professional fees and expenses incurred by the town for engineers, architects, landscape architects, financial consultants, including CPAs, lawyers, hydrologists, and hydro hydrogeologists and wetland scientists. Nine, pay one-time contribution toward capital needs, 500,000 toward the purchase of a new ladder track, we'll broaden that to fire equipment actually. 500,000 of the CPC land conservation fund and 500,000 towards a turf field project or more broadly athletic fields. So those are the, the main fiscal impacts and I'm not gonna go into the environmental impacts or the traffic impacts or the other impacts because we discussed those at previous meetings and we're focused on the fiscal impacts and have a limited time this morning. So I wanna take the, um, uh, the two things that we needed to discuss this morning. One was the 60% AMI for the half of the affordable units and the um, other one to regarding the actual number of um, units that we wanted to uh, target the developer tonight. Um, board members, before we get into that, was there any other item in the um, fiscal impact that you wanted um, to revisit this morning um, <clears throat> so that I can manage our time well because I know Becky has to leave by 9.15. Um, Eli, doesn't the... Uh number uh, the request for making some of the affordable units uh, 60 percent have fiscal impact uh, say that again we have discussed asking for some of the affordable units to be at 60 percent of the AMI and I think that's listed under other no it's actually under uh, the fiscal right now Okay, sorry, thank you. It's fiscal five. Fiscal five. Then I have the wrong list. <laughs> thank you. Greg sent out the updated list yesterday. Um, 6.46, I think it was, 44 last night. <clears throat> Any of the other the items that the board members want to cover or redress? All right, and, and, and what I'd like to do is I'd like to get into your um, discussion around the 60% AMI number first. And uh, could you uh, discuss what you came up with in your calculations? Yes. Um, my I took the uh, numbers that SLV presented for their rentals um, and uh, um, calculated what the total, and of course I don't, calculated what the total um, rent would be um, at, and then factored in um, they gave a number for what um, their um, affordable units would be at 80%. Um, there may be some fine points around um, how many members of the family there are in a family, but I just took their number at 80%, figured out what 100% would be, and then calculated 60% from there. Um, and basically, if a quarter of the units were moved from 80% to 60%, the impact on the 
estimated impact on the um, rental would be a 0.89%. Um, and if, uh, let me, okay. Uh, hmm. Sorry, I hadn't expected to be called on for this right now. Um, okay. Right. Um, if 100% of um, the units were at 60%, um, they would lose about $15,000 a month. It would be $15,000 a month less than their estimate. Um, or about 4%. Um, we had talked about um, yeah, at 60% of the affordable units at 60% um, AMI, um, the revenue would redu be reduced by um, $9,180 and the um, which is uh, 2.27. So um, I suspect that they would just as soon not have anything reduced at all, but um, I think it would be um, in the town's interest uh, to make some units uh, probably 25% um, more affordable. So uh, that would be actually reducing it from our current um, number that we had in our- uh... Okay, and, and we, there's no reason not to stay with our current number for negotiation. Yeah. It's, so- When they say it's completely unaffordable, I, I think, I think we have numbers that say it's certainly cost you less than um, your estimated uh, vacancies. Eli, I have a question for Ann. Yeah, go ahead, John. All right, Ann. And it's uh, you, you, all of the calculations I pretty much understood here that you've got, and um, it, it kind of lays out this is what the story is. The one thing that is not clear to me is what the rents are for 60% uh, affordable. And I think you mentioned it earlier, although it was a calculation, but it was not laid out here. The um, applicant, of course, gave us the rents for 80% oh. and they, they gave us the rents for market. Yep. But I don't know what the rents are, you know, just for example, a one bedroom at market is $2,800 that the, the, the applicant gave us that. And the rent for an 80% uh, at uh, yes. for an eighty percent affordable, a seventeen fifty one. What's the I'm rent sorry. for a sixty percent? I'm sorry, I didn't do that calculation. Um, it was a good question, and um, I, I can easily do it, but not right now. Okay, because that, that seems to be is, is a critical driver. If uh, at eighty percent, if they're paying seventeen hundred dollars, if they're at sixty percent, I I don't know. Is there some I, sort I would of a proportional that, number? It's I, I have assumed that the numbers are proportional. Um, but, um, uh, so divide by point eight, multiply by point six. Okay. Um, so I will note that we did receive a letter from the Affordable Housing Trust um, some time ago when they were looking at the AMI numbers and they actually had made a request that we go to the 60% number for uh, some number of the units based on a calculation um, <clears throat> that the 80% number wouldn't really allow um, significant number of our uh, town employees to mm -hmm. take advantage of <laughs> the affordable units, whereas 60% number would. Um, Eli, may I ask a question? Yeah, go ahead. Um, just out of curiosity, looking at the, you know, 60% AMI, do we have an idea of what um, in, on Cape Ann uh, average affordable units would go at? 
did that question make sense? I'm just trying to figure out if if we go to 60% of AMI for Manchester, does that, um, and I know we're looking at Manchester, but, but is that number applicable beyond Manchester for people who might wish to move into the town? So um, Eli, yeah, go ahead. Greg. So, so the AMI, um, the median income is, is regional. It's not Manchester specific. Oh, good. All right. Thank you. So, so those numbers would be very similar. I believe I have that right. Sue could correct me if I'm wrong. Eli, go ahead, Jeff. You're, you're, I'm sorry. You're, you're right, Greg. And I'm looking up. I think we have. I think in the housing production plan, we have the number for the 60% AMI. I'll, I'm, I'm looking for that. I'll try to get it to you in just a second. For the rent. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jeff. Um, I believe that these figures are accurate in response to John's question uh, for 60% rents and what they actually are for one, two, and three bedrooms. For one bedroom, it's 1683. For two bedrooms, it's 1980. And for three bedrooms, it's 23, 6, 23 excuse me, 2232. Is there any rent differentiation between one one bedroom and one plus bedroom? Not in the numbers that they gave us. Do we even have a definition of what one plus means? We have not been able to nail any specific information on the one plus down or nail down information on the one plus that I've seen yet. I didn't make coffee, but I'm smelling coffee. Someone out there making coffee? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so right now um, uh, we have half the units at the 60% AMI number question is whether or not we want to uh, ask for more of that tonight or that or just stick with that half number. What was the number that the affordable trust asked for or percentage? Do you remember? I don't remember that. I mean, I remember it, but I don't remember specifics. I believe it was half, but I'll have to look. If I may, Eli, my preference would be to leave it at half at this point in time. Other board members? I agree with Becky. I think that's a good good position to start with here. And? Um, I'm good with either. Jeff? I'm not sure, Anne, what you mean. I'm good with either. Sorry. Um, the, dif the difference. Yeah. I'll go with Becky. I'm not sure that we shouldn't uh, go 40-60. 80, 60. Um, mm -hmm. The advantage is, you know, we start high and, and mm -hmm. have room to move. Mm -hmm. 40, 60, 80, 60. Can you, I'm sorry, can you uh, uh, be more specific for me, Jeff? 40% at 80 and 60% at 60.
It's 10 more percent than, than the 50-50 proposal for the 60s. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the whole idea that this is affordable housing um, mm. is, uh, is so, uh, I want to use the right word here, and I, and the ones that I'm coming up with are really upsetting words. <laughs> like ludicrous? Um, uh, yeah, okay. I was going to say deceptive. It is deceptive. However, it's like, it's, like, it's, it's like a scam between developers and the legislature. Yep. So but it is the bylaw. I'm, I'm actually personally inclined to just say all the units should be 60% AMI and let the developer. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah. Those. Yeah. Uh, Why not? The 60% the AMI numbers, first of all, my personal opinion is that rent numbers are um, uh, essentially usury right now. The, compared to mortgage rates, it's, it's pretty abysmal what you have to pay in rent in order to live uh, anywhere. Um, uh, the, uh, it's just so out of proportion to uh, what the the valuations of the property actually are. It just, it just is astonishing to me. And I think it's it's not um, healthy for people to have to, to rent. Uh, and so the 60% AMI numbers to me actually represent, uh, um, you know, if you look at the 60% AMI number for a three bedroom, that's the same as a mortgage for a reasonable house. It's absurd so but not for a three bedroom house what's that that's not the same as a mortgage for a three bedroom house 22 yeah you can get a mortgage there's basically in that range for a three bedroom house yes you in, can in manchester by the beach not in manchester by the sea but regionally you can so um i don't have an awful lot of sympathy for the rent numbers and um um, so my inclination would actually be to bump that number up to all of the AMI, all, all of the affordable units and let the developer uh, argue it back down. Um, the I agree with you completely for all the reasons, Eli. So I'll make a motion that we actually change the number um, to all the uh, affordable units for the 60% AMI number. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor, Ms. Jakes? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Bob Turner? Yes. Ms. Harrison? Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. All right, next, we're gonna to turn to the other number. Um, and by the way, these two numbers are going to be eventually tied together and uh, we're going to go back and forth with the developer and who knows what the discussion is going to be like. Um, on item number one, reducing the number of apartments. We left the number out for the developer. We discussed something in the 130 range at last week's um, uh, uh, workshop meeting. <clears throat> Since then, we went back to clarify what the large project number actually would be. Um, and uh, uh, that number currently using the 2010 census numbers around it's 137, rounded up from 136 points something. Um, so um, given the information about the large project numbers and the discussion we had last week, I wanna go around the board and see where they are and what number they wanna to present to the developer tonight as a starting point for negotiations. Anybody wanna go first? Eli, if I may, of course. Yep, go ahead, Becky. Um, since I think I was the one who asked this <clears throat> floor reduction be put on um, 
I'm kind of torn, frankly, between reducing four to three floors. Um, I, I'm I'm almost to the point of pushing the number of units up a little bit if we can get more affordable units. Um, if that would um, get the developer to do more affordable units. Um, not the 157, of course, but anyway, uh, I know that there are a lot of fiscal impacts that would um, need to be addressed if we, you know, based on numbers, the number of units. But I, I just, I wonder if that gives us I don't know, better affordable numbers. Eli? Yeah, go ahead, Ann. Um, my feeling from earlier discussions is, uh, let me first address Becky's comment about floors. Um, if we make a reduction in the vicinity of um, yeah, 135, 137, um, we could reduce the main section, some sections to three floors and have um, a couple of four-story towers that, or the developer could, um, which might make the project more visually interesting. Um, so it's really not a question of three or four, it's, because he's not going to expand. I don't know what he's going to do, but uh, it's unlikely that they'll expand uh, the other units when they take out units. So I'm, I, my inclination is not for, for, for us not to ask for anything and for him to go forward um, with his 157 number, which he probably knows is unsustainable. Um, I. I think we need to keep enough units so that we don't face this size of a project again in the near future. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, even if he only came down to what he is, might, will, would be allowed um, under the large projects law, um, I'm content with that. And I'd like to see him make that move. So I would also personally like to hear from the developer because the developer, you know, uh, definitely knows about the large project. Um, mm -hmm. And they've made a calculation as to uh, what that is. And our calculation, um, suggests that their number is well above that um, number. And um, I think it would be uh, useful to us to have the developer explain themselves with respect to the large project number. And one way to force that is to um, set a target for the number of units. If we set a target, um, um, how does that force them to explain why they are so far out of line with the large project number? Because the very first thing out of my mouth would be when they kick and moan and say, no, our number is 157, <clears throat> it would be to tell them, well, your number really can't be 157 because um, that's over, going to be over the large project threshold and you're going to have to reduce it. Otherwise, you can be denied out of hand in the zoning board and you're going to reduce it. So you're already close to that number. This number is um, not significantly done uh, different from that number. Um, what do you have to say about that? Okay. Okay. 
So Eli, are you saying stay with the 157 or are you saying some number above 137 and see what happens? No, I was saying some number below 137. Oh, below 137, mm -hmm. okay. But not appreciably below. Well, the board- It doesn't uh, make any difference. It really doesn't make any difference. No. That seems to be the key number. The ratios of the, the units from a fiscal impact standpoint appear to be the main factor to, to, to us. Um, there's a desire to reduce the height of the building to three main floors, at least in part. Um, uh, okay. So I'm, I'm I, 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 I'd ask Sue Brown a question then. Sue's on the call. Yeah. So what is the delta between the uh, 137 number, which is the uh, you know large project definition, and our requirement to meet um, the affordable housing uh, cutoff. It's only a few units here. <laughs> yeah, John, it, it it is just a, it is just a few units, and it's really our best guess because we won't know what that will be until the new census numbers come out. But we had estimated around 130 to 135 was, would be our new number. And you're suggesting anything below 137. So I think it's all, it's within the margin okay. of error. <laughs> all right. there. So, so, so my proposal, Eli, would be, I would not want to go below that 130 number because then we're in jeopardy. Mm. And above 137, the, Builder is in jeopardy. So that's got us bracketed into a, you know, like 130, 135 number. Yeah. What I don't want to have happen, and I doubt it would, because I don't think that the, uh, that the developer could afford to do this, but I certainly wouldn't want to have sort of uh, the developer come back and say, fine, I'll do 130 units, you know, and then we're in a bit of a pickle. I know that the developer has to make the numbers work, whether this developer develops the, land or not or sells it you know get but um i just don't want to put us in a position where we don't have enough eli if i may yeah go ahead um becky becky's suggestion um and sue brown's concern um assume that we don't do anything else about affordable housing in town. Um, you get some credit against a 40B for having made a good effort. And I think if, if we have this project, we've certainly made a huge step toward building affordable housing. Um, and we can continue to add to it um, in town through the Affordable Housing Trust and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, this is not the end of our affordable housing efforts. No, and that's a good <laughs> point to raise because this particular project doesn't add sufficient actual affordable housing um, to the town's inventory in the long run to uh, really uh, uh, fit our needs. We, we will want to add additional actually affordable units as opposed to units that are just counted against the SHI. Um, and those, those, uh, some of those projects are um, currently being researched by the MHA and the MAHT. Um, it's just unfortunately they're not uh, uh, arriving in a timely enough manner for these negotiations. Um, <coughs> Eli, if I could put me, if I could say a couple of things. Yeah, go um, ahead. Um, number one is uh, 
I'm, I'm not only skeptical, I am very, uh, um, very untrusting of this developer because I recall way back at the beginning of this where he said, absolutely nothing will happen with the 157 number. We carefully uh, calculate these things to make projects affordable um, uh, or, or profitable. And um, we will not be reducing the 157 under any circumstances. So if that's your opening position, then this is no, not gonna go anywhere. Um, and then on January 21st, he sends us a memo that says, under no circumstances would I go below 133 because I don't want, I don't think it's in the best interest of the town to go below your SHI number. Um, but you know, I want I want these things back for reducing. Um, so I'm I'm a, I'm just skeptical. I just don't trust this whatever comes out of his mouth at this point. No. Um, and uh, I, I'm I'm strongly uh, in favor of the 135 number. Um, the biggest concern that we have here is that large project goes away for us in terms of a project like this. Um, if our census uh, goes above, our, our housing census goes above um, 2,500. Okay. And we're, we're pushing towards that right now. Um, so, the comments that were just made about we need to do more affordable housing um, to uh, provide affordable housing. I strongly agree with those comments. And um, we need to do that so that we don't get into a situation where we have to entertain another 40B um, because that project could go over 200 units, which is what happens at 2,500 SHI, uh, mm -hmm. not SHI, but a, but a housing inventory of 2,500. Per mm -hmm. year round. Per year round. <clears throat> okay. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm very so, much in line with the 135 number. Um, Eli, am I? No, go ahead, Jim. Go ahead, Greg. All right. No, go um, ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Okay. Um, yeah, I, the 2,500 number, I don't think we're going to come up with that. This is, uh, these calculations are done every 10 years. And right now, I'm not sure where we're going to come in for 2020 because it's every 10 years on the, on, on the 10 year multiple. Um, I think it's going to be somewhere around 2,400, but that means that that, if, you know, to hit 2,500, we've got 10 years before that becomes, becomes an onus on us. And I think that this whole experience uh, has sensitized enough people in town to realize that we've got to push affordable housing along, programs along, to show that we're, we're, we're making a good effort in that area um, over the next 10 years. And the fact is, is that if you do that, even if you don't attain the number that you should be at, given 2,500 units, um, the state will say, okay, you're making a good faith effort. And that doesn't become a problem. I don't think we've had much in the way of results over the past 10 or 15 years that would convince them of that. And that's why we are where we are right now. But um, the 2,500, that's, if, if we go over that number, and it's quite possible that we will uh, in 2030, we have some time to, um, uh, to address, address concerns. Greg? So just to expand on that a little bit, and it's a bit of a contrarian perspective from what you're currently saying, but I'll just throw it out there as, as the alternative. Um, so this site is, is very, very challenging. It is, it is, if we were designing our affordable housing efforts from scratch, we would never pick this location. Um, and if we're forced to have a, a development go in this spot because of the state ultimately dictating that, then maybe we push for the, 
the smallest possible project and advocate and get working on and, and continue the work of putting affordable housing in better locations in the town. So a contrarian approach is to say, this site is so compromised that it can only handle 60, 70 units. Um, and sure, we're still susceptible to, it doesn't get us our, our 10%, um, but we've all been saying that the majority of these units aren't affordable anyways. It's a quirk of state law that he's allowed to count all of them towards our SHI because they're rental. But there's, it's not solving our affordable affordability issue. Um, so the contrarian approach is to say, sorry, this is a minimalist project. We only want you know, less than, certainly under 100, which helps with the access issues. Because mm -hmm. those access issues come into play when you're over 100 units in terms of national standards, in terms of second egress and all of that. Um, so you say, look, the only way you get a project here at all is if it's relatively small. I mean, for Manchester still, 60, 70 is still a big number, but a lot better than 130 or 150. And we continue to work very hard on getting the affordable housing that we really want in town um, with the housing trust, with the housing authority, with a, a, a citizenry that, that is motivated to, to what I will say, do it right. Um, so I know that's con contrary to where your current thinking is, and I, it'll be a huge lift. Um, I, I, I'm not optimistic that Mr. Engler would, would agree to a lip at that number, um, but I don't think it hurts to ask. Eli, if I may. Yeah, I understand that. That's a very, I am concerned that if we came out and said, no, it's only going to be sick, we can only support 60 units, um, that that would be the end of the lip um, of the friendly 40B. Um, my, I'm still having some trouble understanding why he's continuing with the friendly 40B at all. I don't. We have set out a list of conditions um, that are that it's it's long, um, it's expensive. Um, I don't know what he thinks he gets from it being, and it's clear that in that there is opposite substantial opposition in town. So I don't see what he's getting out of this that will keep him from just coming to this first meeting and saying, "No, I'm going to the state," and. I, asking for 60 for 60 units would I, I think would push him over that limit without <laughs> would it make a short meeting right no I, I agree and that that is that is a risk uh, you know do, can you have a fallback or does he walk I, that's a hard call um, but maybe it's maybe it's 90 95 and, and because of that hundred to me a hundred is a is a critical threshold from a public safety perspective. Eli, may I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead, Becky. Um, I was just going to say that, Greg. I think, you know, in terms of, you know, looking at num when we're looking at numbers, um, we do also need to look at the safety aspects. Um, and and to that end, um, I know we're just looking at the fiscal impacts at this point, but for the numbers, we need to look at the safety also. Even though we haven't got time to do that this morning because I have to leave for work soon, but. Yeah, that yeah. one's actually going to be, um, uh, probably was going to be discussed more when we got to the issue of traffic and uh, other safety concerns. Um, but you're right. Um, if you, it, it can be made that the, uh, from the argument can be made that, uh, for safety reasons, um, we, uh, can only support 60 or 80 
units. Um, that uh, <coughs> uh, that uh, is um, <coughs> Just in addition to what I was just because that, I mean, again, if we have fewer units and um, better traffic around the development itself, there's more access with, for example, the ladder truck or emergency equipment, you know, so all those numbers, the fiscal numbers change with fewer un units. Which is stating the obvious. I know. If I may, oh, go ahead, John. Uh, yeah, Greg, I just wanted to get a better understanding when you said uh, what what does not apply once you're under 100 units. Well, uh, just the, um, the the NFPA standards for um, uh, secondary access kicks in when you're over 100, 100 units. Now that standard doesn't apply to Massachusetts because Massachusetts state fire code doesn't recognize that particular NFPA standard. Um, but nonetheless, it is a standard that is out there. Um, okay. And that, that was the basis for it. All right. I'll go for that. Just the whole site, the fixed costs associated <laughs> with the site are so high. He, he needs a certain number of units to make economic sense mm -hmm. for him. And this, I, I, I think right. he walks. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, I, think, I think there's a second way of getting at that. Um, and, you know, I, I think this is a terrible site. I agree with you, Greg, um, for so many reasons. Um, but to go to him and say 60, 80, 99 units because of this national standard that doesn't apply in Massachusetts is going to be, as somebody mentioned, a short meeting. Um, he won't entertain anything. He won't even discuss that and he'll walk. Um, and then the question is, what have we gotten out of it? Um, and we've gotten zip. Uh, I think the second way of getting at this, and, and I, I think it's a, a very critical issue, is secondary access road, or we walk. I think we do need to address the safety of the units, the safety of the people in the units. Um, but I think that that could be, you know, our bottom line position in terms of this whole negotiation. Um, certainly there are environmental concerns. Certainly I wouldn't even wanna entertain that we close these negotiations um, by the end of February without the data from um, the environmental study that um, needs to happen of the vernal pools. Um, you know, his rush to get this done by the end of February is, uh, is I think very much timed to avoid having to deal with the vernal pools. Um, and even if we put it in as a condition of our approval and gave him our approval, um, I don't think that's enough. I don't think we can close the negotiations until the vernal pools are actually ascertained. Eli, if I may. Go ahead, Becky. Is that not more under the purview of the ZBA? Not that I'm disagreeing at all, Jeff, but I, I just, you know, I mean, I, <clears throat> um, just trying to make sure that the points we're trying to strike here are applicable points. 
actually, um, I'm going to uh, step in here. So this part of the conversation around the, the end dates of the negotiations and, and the environmental aspects is conversation that we'll have at a future date. I think, I, I think it's uh, useful to bear in mind, but I don't think it's going to help us in our, our opening steps here. And we have a limited amount mm -hmm. of time. So um, <clears throat> I want to go back to the um, number of units and the fiscal impact. I, I, I brought those issues up, Eli, in terms of Greg's comment about going to 6080 and, yeah. um, and that that's going to push him out the door. Um, yeah. And, you know, what are our bottom lines in terms of we're not going to we're not going to yield on these issues. So what's so your suggestion? I, I, I apologize for diverting us from the fiscal impact. No, that's all right. So, so what your suggestion was, uh, if, if I uh, can paraphrase it, is to stick with the higher number and then um, expect to negotiate the safety aspects um, later on with some leverage. Is that accurate? Yes. With, with, I don't know what you mean with, by with some leverage. Well, the leverage is. Um, we, we, I would, I would, I would not endorse a proposal that that didn't have a second access. Yeah. So. Um, point would be to see if we can get them to agree to the 130 units or 135 units or whatever, and then um, discuss the. Um, the rest of it later, and they act on the. It, it's a useful stake to have in, in the in the ground to give him 130 units. Clearly, it's um, uh, a good number for him, as Ann said previously. Um, uh, the fiscal impact is uh, affected more by the ratio of the units: three to one, one plus. And um, we, the position's been suggested that we should negotiate hard on other points that are important to us, like safety. So, um, anyway, yeah. Other board members, it's about five till nine. So we got about 20 minutes. Uh, left in this uh, uh, discussion. Eli, I actually have to be on the road by 9.15. So I need to check off a little bit, check out a little bit or prior to that. So maybe we only have 10 or 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Continue the meeting without Becky. However, I think it would be appropriate for us to have full board here. Perhaps we could ask Becky for other concerns um, now or just stop it when she has to leave. <laughs> Becky, I'm, where are you? Oh, if Jeff. I may, if I. Yeah, go ahead, Becky. Um, I, you know, it's just. It's obvious that there are so many different ways to peel this. Um, and I, I, I guess what I would say is given what our job in this is um, and given the real news information that we know and that we have, um, I guess we just have to go forward with what will give us the best negotiating leverage. So that's, and I think with that, um, without causing the developer to turn and walk at this point, um, I think we need to start with a number that will be negotiable. While I really like Greg's idea and would prefer, you know, fewer, if any at all, up there. I think we do have to start with about 135. 
Jeff? Uh, just as a, as a time issue, I need to be out of here by 9.30. Um, the, um, the 135 number is uh, the number that we're, I'm, I'm comfortable with primarily from the point of view of having a small cushion on our SHI number um, so that we can move forward with the plans that John's saying we could do over 10 years um, a little bit more expeditiously. I, I, I'm concerned that we're gonna be bumping um, if we go much lower than that. And I know that Sue had said 120 is the flat out number, but that's based on a lack of data for a couple of things that we need to know. Um, okay. By the end of the year, that data will be here. And Eli, I'm, I'm, I'm good with 135 as well. And I'm just, you know, if, if you do the calculations as to what's happening 10, 10 years out, if this place gets built, that's adding 130 units to our housing stock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's definitely going to push us over 2,500 in by, by 2030. So, uh, but with this, it, cer it certainly is um, represents a, an effort to get to where we need to be, and I'm, I'm confident that we'll be more conscientious uh, in affordable housing efforts over the next 10 years. So I, I'm not overly concerned if that's the way things play out, but I expect we'll be over 2,500 for sure in 2030. I am good with going with 135 as our opening position. I think 135 will, um, uh, he'll, he'll definitely stay with us in the negotiations. I don't think, honestly, it's going to be difficult to get him to agree to 135. Um, <clears throat> ultimately, we're going to get down to the safety side of things, and then mm -hmm. things are going to be a little bit more dicey, um, but I'm okay with that. I would be comfortable with going with 130 as well. Uh, 135, I, I, I think is gonna be actually, honestly, a fairly easy uh, discussion with him. I think he's gonna kick like a mule, but it's gonna be all posture. I'm happy to go with 130. If that gives us more negotiation room. It's five units. <laughs> I mean, I, it's I think five units, but it yeah, really, really matter at that point. 130, 135 is, is um, no significant difference in the negotiation. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, anybody want to make a motion here? I make a motion that we uh, set the reduction in apartments to 135. Proportional, proportional to the uh, existing proportions of affordable units. Mm -hmm. yeah. Second. Um, did you, sorry, did you mean affordable units or the proportion of um, various bedrooms, various sizes? Uh, I, I, thank you, Ann. Um, what, I, what I mean is proportional to the sizes of the units mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. currently proposed affordable unit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Second, as clarified. Any discussion? All in favor, roll call vote. Ms. Jakes? Yes. Mr. Round? Yes. Mr. Bob Turner? Yes. 
Ms. Harrison. Yes. The bowling votes, yes. Um, we had in our um, a draft comment here, uh, the additional um, uh, clause reducing the height to three main floors. Um, <clears throat> that was what actually did go out in the draft form to uh, the developer. Mm -hmm. um, and by the, the vote that we just had, uh, we would be changing our, we would be clarifying to the developer that we could reduce the number of apartments to 135 and reduce the height to three main floors. Um, how uh, does the board want that presented, if at all, tonight? May I, Eli? Yes. I think that the three floors um, speaks to a couple different aspects. One, of course, just visual, but the second being um, accessibility for um, a ladder truck to do what it needs to do. Back to safety. But. Would it be fair? to present it as um, reduce the apartments, number of apartments to 135 and use the uh, reduction in number of units to reduce um, portions of the building to below three floors. I think so. Uh, three floors or below? Mm -mm. Sure. Uh, Eli? Um, th I think this in part gets gets into the the whole redesign issue, which is in another category. It's kind of other impacts. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I think um, I'm, I'm kind of I certainly am interested in, in getting the height of this thing down. But I'm also interested in the redes redesign aspects to get the, the massing appearance uh, reduced. And part of that, of course, is having some variation in heights in various places. So it's not like three floors is necessarily an absolute, but certainly that should be the trend. So I, I you know, this kind of blends in, both of those topics kind of blend together for me. They do. So I can definitely make the comment tonight and then we can push that out so that we can mm -hmm. have a little bit less to um, uh, discuss tonight. I'd agree with that. All right, so it is um, a little bit past five minutes past nine. Um, we've accomplished what we needed to accomplish um, uh, this morning. Good. Tonight, I will be again focusing the discussion and restricting the discussion to the fiscal impacts section. Um, <clears throat> the developer will want to have another meeting. Um, probably not very long after uh, this initial negotiation meeting. I think that we have enough um, additional information to obtain that we don't want to have that second meeting more closer than two weeks from um, mm -hmm. now. Does it, uh, other board members agree with that? Uh, Eli, I, I have a small comment on number nine. Um, a, I thought we said that that would be for new fire equipment rather than specifically a ladder truck. I'll clarify that tonight. Okay. I, I have one other comment on number six, um, which is, are we entertaining any of the proposed uh, grant application request? Sorry? Are we entertaining any of the proposed grant application request? Okay. You mean for like the roundabouts and things like no, that? No, 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 for, for the water. Mm. In, in his memo of, June, of January 21. No, I wasn't going to do that. I was just going to tell him <clears throat> he's got to pay for this and where he got to reduce the number of units. Um, I was kind of ignoring that um, proposal from him on the basis that he was already going to have to reduce down to the large project threshold and therefore his... Um, uh, and his, his offers were kind of um, uh, valueless. Okay. 
would you, um, you could certainly, you can, I, we can certainly let them bring it up, <clears throat> but I'm not going to condition the reduction of the number of units to us um, doing something for him. Did you have a different um, uh, uh, thrust in mind? I think we should hold that in abeyance um, in the sense that uh, on some of the more difficult things to swallow, like a secondary access road, um, that this may be a, a negotiating point. Ah, I see. <clears throat> Fair enough. And uh, to go back again about the um, uh, next uh, meeting time uh, with him, because they'll be asking tonight. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. I don't think any closer than two weeks is, any, is um, where I want to be. Uh, mm -hmm. Are board members okay with that? Yes. 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 We have, we have some other work yeah. to do besides 40 <laughs> We do. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, I and uh, tonight I will um, be allowing uh, public comment. What's that? I said good. <clears throat> All right. If there's nothing else, I'm going to get a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> Becky can move it. <laughs> okay. If discussion. we'd like to move it, move it. <laughs> uh, um, all in favor. Ms. Jakes. Yes. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mr. Bodger Turner. Yes. Ms. Harrison. Yes. Mr. Bowling votes yes. See you folks tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good days. <laughs>